morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett for Neurosurgical TV. Today we have another in the uh, series of uh, Neurosurgery Super Sundays with Ipe Cherian. Ipe is going to talk today about different unlocking, accessing the difficult in cranial surgery, which I don't know what it means, but I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I'll find out. Hello, Ipe. Welcome. Hi, John. Hello. Uh, so today we will talk about different unlockings. So, you know, skull base surgery, uh, vascular surgery, these both are about tensionless high magnification surgery. Tensionless not only for the surgeon, but also for the brain. Skull base and vascular surgery is all about, uh, you know, unlocking. And uh, we're going to show you a few videos of how to unlock. We've told this concept many, many times before. So I'm just going to share my screen. You can watch this. And Can you see this, John? Yes, I can. Okay. So, uh, as before, we're going to talk about how we unlock the brain. So, very simple. First one, this is the sagittal unlocking. So, the brain is usually like this. And the things that you want, like your interparenchymal system, your supracellular system, all these things are here. So it's very common for you to go ahead and unlock axial unlocking. So the extradural axial unlocking would be to take off all this bone so that you don't have to really retract this brain and take off the anterior clinoid process and then reach here. Okay, this is a... Uh, uh, this is the sagittal unlocking. And well, intradurally also you can do this. Intradurally you open the sylvian fissure. This is the more classic form of unlocking. If you open the sylvian fissure, also you can get into this region. So this is like an open sylvian fissure. So I call it intradural oblique unlocking, but it, it is a variation of sagittal unlocking. So. Sagittal unlocking extradural, that is removing bone, and intradural or oblique unlocking, oblique or sagittal unlocking is uh, this again, opening sylvian fissure. Okay? Now, if you want to get into the posterior part of the interpedicular system, you have to do something called the axial unlocking. Okay? So, let us see. So let's see, this is the cavernous sinus, this is the temporal lobe, this is the midbrain, this is the interpedicular system. Supposing you have to come from here to here, you need to have some space here and that is why you should remove this temporal lobe, I mean not remove, you should peel off this temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus and without creating bleeding. So the earlier Dolenz technique is the transcavernous technique where you peel this temporal lobe off the cavernous sinus, but there will be uh, some bleeding which you can pack, and then you can get into the interpedicular system rather easy. So we are going to show you this unlocking. Okay, now to identify everything, this is the orbit. This is the lateral margin of the, the bone at the lateral margin of the superior orbital fissure. That is the temporal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. This is the orbital roof. That is the orbital meningeal band. And you see, what I am doing right now is I am taking the axial, I am doing axial unlocking. I am taking the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. So you can see that I am preserving the true cavernous membrane. I'm doing sharp dissection. This is the lateral most margin of the superior orbital fissure. So this temporal lobe 
I am slowly separating it off from, from the cavernous sinus. So preserving the true cavernous membrane. So I'm cutting the orbitomeningeal band now here. I'm cutting the orbitomeningeal band. So that is the that is the anterior clinoid process taking shape. So I am cutting. This is the temporal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. This is a frontotemporal angle. That is where the orbitomeningeal band is. So I'm cutting it off. The frontotemporal angle I'm releasing extradurally. I will show you how to release the frontotemporal angle intradurally also. I will show you that. Okay, now we are seeing the entire cavernous sinus. So here is the fourth nerve. The third nerve is here immediately. This is the dural band. So I am further dissecting posteriorly. You can see now I am removing the anterior clinoid process. So that is the fourth nerve. This is a dural band, this is a fourth nerve, this is a V1, and the carotid is here, optic nerve. Optic nerve is here, carotid is here. So I'm removing the strut now. The optic strut is between the carotid and the optic nerve. And after this, now I'm doing the axial unlocking. So you can see the V1, the V2. And the V3, this is the gasoline ganglion. So this is the this is the fourth nerve. You can see the fourth nerve underneath the membrane, and this is the Parkinson's triangle. We will develop the Parkinson's triangle where you will see the carotid. So you have the carotid there, C3 carotid, and that is the optic nerve. This is the optic nerve, carotid, clinoid triangle. This is the this is the fourth nerve, third nerve is here, down here, and this is, so now we have come to the Parkinson's triangle, that is between the fourth nerve and the V1, and you can see the C5 carotid there, and uh, medial to the V1, you will see the sixth nerve, can you see? This is the sixth nerve, okay, it's beautiful. So this is C5 vertical paraclival carotid, and this is the sixth nerve. So I'm going to show you that's the sixth nerve. It's coming from the Dorulos canal there, there, Dorulos canal there, and it's going like that, sixth nerve, medial to V1. So this, this is the carotid. So you have optic nerve, carotid, uh, V1, fourth nerve here, Parkinson's triangle here, V2, V3 there, okay? It's beautiful cavernous sinus anatomy. Dissecting further. So you can see the third nerve, the sleeve of the third nerve is open now. This is a gazerian ganglion, this is the retrogazerian part. Now I am dissecting V3 away from the middle fossa floor. So you will see the GSPN there. So you can see the band of GSPN there. You are seeing the Kawase triangle right now. So I'm extradurally developing, axial unlocking going on all the way to develop the Kawase triangle. The band of GSPN you can see it all the way here. That is V3, that is the Peters Ridge, and we are going towards the RPA terminus. So this is the Kawase Triangle. We have drilled the Kawase Triangle, you can see. That is the drilling of the Kawase Triangle. We have drilled the Kawase Triangle, this is the fifth now. I have opened the dura like that, this is the fifth nerve there. Fifth nerve is being released first by an, a C incision like that. So this is the carotid, you 
you remember this is the carotid c5 carotid so this is the retrogal this is the pons and you can see the iam there you can see the fourth nerve there The seventh eighth will come there. So that is the fifth, fifth nerve. What nerve is that? <laughs> this is the, you can see the fourth nerve. You can see the third nerve. You can see the facial nerve. And now I'm going to show you some cases. So this is a, after exhale unlocking. This is a basal aneurysm. So this is the mammillary bodies. Mammillary bodies there under very high magnification. This is the this is the carotid. This is a giant peak, giant pecom, large pecom. That's the basal artery, and this is the aneurysm. It's a ruptured aneurysm. Is a third nerve there? That is P1 continuing as P2. That is a basal artery. And so that is aneurysm. So this is possible with this approach. Once you do axial unlocking, you you have very good access. So what you are doing is the temporal lobe is just being held held here. You can see how the this aneurysm is. You can see this large pecom there. This is the P2. That is where from the third nerve was coming. This is the basilar and this is the aneurysm. Exactly this window is what you are seeing there. The same thing you are seeing. That's the basilar. This is the PCOM. Okay, now I'm showing you some uh, intradural unlocking. This is a very thick Sylvian fissure. So this is a this is a very important skill that you have to develop. The, uh, dissecting the Sylvian is a um, once when Yuha was here, he used to tell tell us, you can know a vascular surgeon by with by the ease how he dissects the Sylvian. Of course, we all keep learning, but you can see how we dissect the Sylvian. Okay. Very slow, take your time, very, very slow, and you keep finding pathways. Don't worry, sometimes there will be no pathways. But you persist and you keep trying to find one millimeter, one second. Hello. Okay. Hello. What happened? Uh huh. No, I'm talking right. I'm in a. I'm in a talk right now. So uh, you can see how the Sylvian is being is being uh, dissected. You can see the MCA. You can see the main trunk of the MCA and in the depth you can see the ICA. And you further release the arachnoid further with the reversed scissor. And now you are seeing how we do the proximal sylvian dissection. I told you about the frontotemporal angle extradurally. Now I'm going to show you the frontotemporal angle intradurally, unlocking the frontotemporal angle intradurally. I'm using a diamond knife. This is the optic nerve under very high magnification. This is the carotid. So we are, that's the optic nerve, that's the carotid, and then we are going to release Release the arachnoid.
This is the frontotemporal angle intradurally. So I am releasing the frontotemporal angle. It's very, very important not to get into the aneurysm first. First, you, you do this proximal sylvian dissection. You do the sylvian dissection first, and then you use the proximal sylvian dissection. Take your time and then use sharp dissection, not blunt dissection. If you use blunt dissection, all these veins and everything, these veins will tear. It's not good. Small vessels will tear. There will be blood all over and your dissection will look bad. Okay? Don't think we started this dissection from beginning itself. We were doing blunt dissection and then we were creating a lot of bleeding first. But later on we improved to be doing this dissection. That is the whole purpose. I mean, you have to start at some point. If you don't do dissection, maybe if you don't do any dissection, blunt dissection is better. But once you reach, once you reach the level of blunt dissection, you must try to improve yourself to sharp dissection. It's scary, you know. Sometimes using the diamond knife just next to the carotid and just next to all these vessels is scary. But it's okay. So you keep improving and see how you release. Very easy. No retraction, nothing. Just, just keep it taut and release. And then very immediately, immediately you will see the A1 now. Okay? This is how you release. See, now you can see the A1 with a lot of arachnoid strands there. These strands you are going to release again. So there is no tension at all on the A1 or on the brain. Further dissection, further dissection. All the strands you take off now. The A1 is seen now. Now we are going to show you another another video where we are doing a orbitomeningeal band dissection, and this is the cavernous sinus. So I'm using like in the cadaver. Exactly like in the cadaver that we are using. This is the lateralmost edge of the superior orbital fissure. And this is the cavernous sinus. You can see the cavernous sinus there. And that is the clinoid process. You can see. Just like in the cadaver. No, no, no bleeding. Okay. This is the cavernous sinus. So this is the clinoid process. Clinoid process is being drilled off. This is the cavernous sinus superior orbital fissure. Here, I do not try to uh, remove the clinoid with the punch. It's not good. Okay. So this is uh, sagittal unlocking. So and this temporal lobe being removed, removed laterally is called axial unlocking. So I am. Uh, I am doing axial and sagittal unlocking side by side. I'm removing the anterior clinoid process almost completely, extradurally. So the anterior clinoid process is keeping on being removed. You can see. It's a huge anterior clinoid process, of course. And now I'm cutting the distal and the proximal dural ring. 
and then I have an aneurysm here. I have an aneurysm here. So once I make that cut in the dura, I can see the carotid, I can see the aneurysm, drill the optic strut, a remainder of the anterior process, and so that is the carotid. That's the carotid and that's the aneurysm there. So I keep pulling and then I keep cutting. Now I'm reaching the cavernous sinus, you see? This, this region where the arrow is, is the cavernous sinus. So it's almost removed. The strut is removed. Now I have to keep cutting that dura, which is actually part of the distal falciform ligament on, on this side and the distal and the proximal dural ring. So now you can see the bleeding from the cavernous sinus. Once I cut that dura, there'll be bleeding from the cavernous sinus. But that's okay. Now I have the carotid here and I have the aneurysm here. So I am using that dura to tamponade that cavernous sinus, some surgery cell into the cavernous sinus. Now I am using proximal control so that this aneurysm is, uh, is, a, um, is a bit loose. I mean, uh, is, is less, is lax. And now I am asking my assistant to just retract a little bit of temporal lobe so that I get some space. I'm lifting off the dura. This is the ligament, the dural ring, so that I get some space to put a clip. Now I'm going to clip this aneurysm. So that is the C3 carotid going into the cavernous sinus there. So I have clipped it. So this is C3 and this is C2 carotid. This is optic now, this is C2 carotid. This is a cavernous carotid. So it's clipped now. It's paraclinoidal aneurysm from the cave. Okay, carotid cave aneurysm. This is another aneurysm, which is uh, IC bifurcation. Here we have done proximal uh, opening, proximal intradural opening. I mean, that is the sylvian dissection. Proximal sylvian dissection we have done. This is why. Uh, is easy because it is unlocked, it's easy to clip this aneurysm now. So that's IC bifurcation. It is done. So we put one clip there. Gentle. And this, this patient also has another aneurysm in the PCOM region. So we are going to put the clip in the PCOM region. So we, once we put the clip, we are readjusting it so that we can see the PCOM very clearly. So readjusting it says so now that is a PCOM, very clearly seen. And that is it. So thank you very much. I will start sharing now. Okay, I, uh, we didn't have, I, I didn't come up well enough uh, to get cameras, I'm sorry. But we had a lot of people watching. I can tell, uh, I can tell from watching it on Facebook. So, so people did benefit by your talk. And it's going to be our time. I wish I could ask you intelligent questions. I am a military surgeon. Uh, now, was that an anterior aneurysm that was clipped in your hand? Yeah, so right now what we clipped uh, was a paraclinoidal, then there was an ACOM, there, there was a um, IC bifurcation, there was a PCOM and a basilar, all these aneurysms. So that is Louis, you can ask him. Well, you know, the, I, I, yeah, what are the most common aneurysms? Well, the most common uh, aneurysms would be anterior, uh, anterior communicating aneurysm, PCOMs, MCAs, uh, MC, I mean, these will be the most common ones. 
Okay, the anterior aneurysm is possible and treat than the other aneurysms? Beg your pardon? The anterior aneurysm is more accessible and easier to treat than other types of aneurysms? Well, all aneurysms are accessible to treatment, but uh, some aneurysms are complex, so it's difficult. So we need to bypass. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean, most of the aneurysms are clippable if you know how to go there. So, for example, I was talking to you about the posterior aneurysms. If you do uh, axial unlocking, basal arts and superior cerebral arts are very accessible. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if there is a pica or a vertebrobasilar aneurysm, then you need other approaches. Again, skull-based approaches. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay, I thank you very much for taking the time. You're welcome. And uh, welcome. to the new uh, resident, good luck to you. Uh, go down to get some Momo. I will tell you where to get the Momo. It took me a while to get the Momo to the Momo world. But they're a, a true delight. <laughs> so, thank you guys and have a great day. Sure, sure, John. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye -bye.